The block's very massive, very few bedding planes in it, so we need to use quarry wire saws to remove the material from the quarry. So these are steel wires with industrial diamond segments, and they cut through the stone, and that's lubricated by water. After we've cut the big slices through the quarry, we use plugs and feathers uh, and big hammers to remove the block, and then chains on the front of excavators to pull the block away. The block's then loaded with cranes uh, and placed onto lorries where it's transported into the factory. Typically these lorries carry about 25 tonnes of saw block or block that can be split into riven paving. Uh, so they're taken from the quarries which are about 50 kilometres away from the factories for further processing. This shows a lorry arriving at one of the factories. The blocks are unloaded with a similar excavator to the one that loaded the materials. And then put into a stockpile of blocks. So we keep uh, block stocks of all the different colours, grey, brown and buff are the main colours that come from uh, India, so these are the main stocks that we keep. The next stage is to carry on the processing of the, the saw blocks. It's important that we measure the block before they go underneath the saws so that we can maximise the, the yield from the saws to, to turn it into finished paving products. So using overhead cranes we put the blocks onto trolleys and these are then wheeled underneath the saws. All the cutting of the stone is done by big circular saws, so these are steel circles with industrial diamond segments on the end, and all the cutting is done by uh, moving the saw blades forwards and backwards across the block and dropping about 5 millimeters each time it passes. There's a lot of water used for the cooling and the lubrication of the saw blades as they cut through the block. Once we've cut the entire block, we can see the width of the paving there. So this block has been cut to a thickness of 25 millimetres. And from there, it's taken out from underneath the saws. And our quality inspection team inspect the slabs to make sure that they are straight and they are dimensionally accurate. From then, we can take them off the base of the block and we can put them on a trolley and transport them then for secondary processing. We try to reduce the manual handling whenever possible, so we use forklift trucks to take the primary cut slabs and take them into the second part of the factory where we're going to cut the edges to make the dimensional paving. Once again, this cutting is done by saws uh, with smaller circular blades this time, but the same segments uh, with industrial diamonds to actually do the cutting. Quality is important at all times, so we have inspectors checking the dimensional accuracy of the finished paving. The problem with Indian sandstone, it is so hard that when you cut it, it's got a glass-like appearance on the surface. So if you were to install that as a patio, uh, it would be very slippery underfoot. So we have to put a surface texture on it. So this is showing shot blasting. So you fire steel shot at the surface of the paving to give it a rough texture. From there, it's stacked and ready to be packaged. This is showing an alternative processing, which is uh, polishing the surface. So we, we're doing internal tiles. We would polish it up to give it a mirror por polish. Quality inspection is important all the way through the process. So as well as checking the dimensional accuracy, we're checking the appearance of the stone to check that it is within the range that we would deem acceptable for our product. Once again, dimensional accuracy is always being checked. 
From there, the products are loaded into wooden crates. The wood comes from sustainable sources in the north of India. We design the crates so that they are robust and suitable for transportation of the product to ensure there's no damage while it's in the shipping container. But also we want to minimize the amount of wood that is used. For bespoke products like curbs and edgings, we make sure that we use extra packaging to make sure there are no chips around the edges. From there, the crates are loaded into a container. We're one of the few operators that's able to load the containers in our own factory. Most suppliers have to load the containers at the port. We don't have to do that. We can load the containers uh, and send them to the port directly. So we know that they're packaged safely to prevent any damage during shipping. Hope that answers all the questions. Thanks. Bye.